I finally got Pathpilot loaded on my computer here, and I got this desktop computer from Craigslist for pretty cheap. And this is a freaking sweet monitor, so I got that along with it, they were selling it. So, I've been in contact with a guy, and he has helped me immensely. And he has a little bit of a YouTube channel himself, so go follow him there, because he's helped me out so incredibly much. And we got her set up, ready to move. Uh, I got the steppers moving and everything. I got my third board, my third breakout board. So this is a C10 board basically. And I got everything hooked up, cobbed together. Works perfectly fine. Parallel port this time, no USB. Well this USB, but that's just for power. And I had to get the Mesa board, which you saw me put in. And that hooks to this parallel port. This parallel port it just allows it to send data, as I understand it, better than a USB would. That's one inch, almost dead on. So the thing moves, which is completely awesome. And I've been dividing this for the last week and a half now, probably two weeks now. And then once, uh, once that guy started to help me with Pathpilot, he sort of convinced me to go with Pathpilot, only because I don't think anyone has ever done this with Pathpilot before. So it made it kind of a fun adventure, slightly frustrating, but Nonetheless, it was fun because we got it to work. But that's just the first part. We still need to process it with using the plasma cutter. So, I know you guys are gonna like this, but I do not have the torch height control. I'm not gonna start off with the torch height controller. And yes, it's, it may be needed, but to start off with, I don't think I'm gonna use it for now. I'm just gonna roll with what I have right now and then figure that out as I go. And if I need it, then I can still get one. So it's, it's, it's still an option, All the, it's always an option. So I only use Fusion 360, and I have to figure out how I can post-process it to use the plasma. Now, if you go in there right now and try to post-process, post-processing basically just means, okay, I have the 3D model in the CAD software. I went over to the integrated CAM program and wrote the tool paths for it. And then you post-process it to get the G-code, and the G-code runs CNC machines. And I'm not sure how I can process it to where I don't use a Z height and I don't use a torch height controller. I just basically set the height manually and then let it go. So that's kind of what we're dealing with now. I have a few other things that we can work on until then, but that's the main thing, trying to figure out how we can process it with Fusion 360. And my torch is on the way. I just got the water table over here, so I'm gonna put that on, put the cable tracks on, the drag chains for all the wires and the stepper motors. Uh, that's the next thing, put on the limit switches. I'm running this without limit switches, by the way, and I know that's probably a big no-no, but I just wanted to see the stupid thing run, so that's what we did. Well, I got one of the drag chains to fit on there, right? And this one over here is sort of giving me fits. This is the panels right there, and it goes back and forth. Well, there's nothing for it to actually run on, so it wants to bend in the middle and break. So I'm having difficulties with that. But nonetheless, we got this thing to move, and that's what I'm most excited about. And, yeah, I'm excited to see what we have coming up. So I think that's going to be it for this one. Next week's video should be something, I think, with the mill, I think. And then after that, we'll get back. And hopefully by that time, we are cutting something on the plasma CNC. Anyway, thanks for watching.